the trust right. factor the trust mm -hmm. factor is um learning to trust yourself and in most cases i believe that we have to have some guidance to know if we are on point with what we're following because it's invisible um one of the things i want to add to um this discussion before i get into it is you know if you write down embarrassment and and, and shame um if you write down fear and how you can actually unravel it i have it on mute um and how you can actually unravel it or take it off which means that as in the bible it says bind the ties or cut the ties that bind you then you have to start working at looking at what is keeping you from progressing and that means that if it's shame, fear, worry, um, doubt, you got to identify these things and begin to let them go. Because the only reason why they're with you is because you, um, you, you, you're carrying them with you, right? And um, it'll be a recording at the end of this here class that you can go back and listen to. And that will identify also how important it is for you to get free. I don't think that age matters. I have to tell myself that often uh, because as we get older, we get tired of what is called the fight. Sometimes you're fighting uh, yourself and the reality of being free. And um, freedom is something that we learned in the churches, but I don't think that we begin to act out freedom. One of the reasons why is because we don't go back to look at history. And whenever there is his story, you're going to have his story. So how do you write your story? Right? And what do you know about history that you could change concerning your story? And you have so many different things that you could add, but you got to write them down. And that means writing down and following through to study, study and show yourself approved. So the last couple of weeks, we have been talking about um, the planet Uranus. And I'm a firm believer, um, even though um, I didn't really practice it, I, I really believed in the heavens and the earth as a uh, unit. I didn't believe in the separation of, you don't have to worry about what's going on in heaven and what's going on in earth. And I brought up the fact that, I, you know, the scripture says, bind what's in heaven, bind it, and then loose it in earth. How can you do that when you don't know what's in heaven, right? And so when you start looking at things that people have taught you, but it doesn't add up, then you're going to begin to become free of the ties that have bound you. And all of that has to do with um, all things that are in ethical order. So when I say binding the ties or cutting ties that have kept you in bondage, I don't mean that you're going to go out and become a dope dealer. You know, I'm just saying. Um, I don't mean you're going to go out and rob somebody. I'm saying you're going to bind the ties that have held you from becoming what prosperous and um, prospering in relationships in um, your household and your finances and across the board, because it's so much that we could add to um, prospering. Your mind has to prosper first and you got to believe it. And it's not just that you say it, it's something that you actually believe in. So if you believe that you can prosper, then you start doing things and saying things that prosper you, not adding more word power onto your life that's binding you, okay? So in this here discussion, the emotions are generally 
tied to something, any emotion that you have. Like if you're born in a, a certain time where it's a water element, you're going to have more emotions than somebody that's born in a time like me as a Capricorn. However, I have Capricorn and I have uh, Pisces, which means that I have earth and water. They go together good because they water each other, right? Um, someone that has um, earth and fire, it may not work as well, especially if they don't learn how to discipline themselves because earth and fire without water and the four elements together will burn up stuff. Uh, the earth can't do anything to stop fire in most cases. So when I, when, I, when I bring up emotions, I want you guys to look at your emotions and say, um, how you can identify with fear coming on and then how you can identify with shame coming on, worry, um, anger, pride, strife. And, you know, envy. And, and sometimes you got to look these words up rather than just listening to somebody say them. You got to look, look them up because you need to re, re identify or come into the place where you're actually looking at these words from a definition perspective rather than just saying that I know what that means. And once you know what fear means to you and you can feel or identify with the feeling, it's so important, then you can start cutting it off. Because in most cases, these emotions come on just like that. Today, I'm sure many people had emotions because Mars is like retrograde, but it's, um, it, it's oppositional to uh, quite a few planets, which means that uh, you, you you get those feelings of lowliness, uh, depression, and anger, and you strike out at people. And I'm not saying that everybody had them, but you've experienced these feelings before. So if you get to a place where you understand the planets, the energy, and where you were born, and you it matters to you, you will get a better understanding of how to, to discipline those feelings and cut them off. All right. And it's important because sometimes you are, we are reacting to energy. You know, a long time it took me to really get into the place and I kind of mull over things where I would teach these things. But working in the areas that I have, I could see how, you know, God put me in it and you can bring it together. We study in Uranus, but I want people to understand their emotions before you can get into Uranus. And um, Uranus it is a planet that brings energy that strikes at any moment. It's like lightning. It has a lot to do with our weather, but it also has a lot to do with technology. The thing about this energy is, is that with Uranus, a lot of people will see it tear down stuff, even their personal lives. And they don't understand the dynamics be, be behind tearing down a personal life. If it's tore down, then it should be able to be rebuilt, right? And so we have to learn how to rebuild. And even look at the fact that a matter that in John 2 and 19, Jesus said, if you destroy this temple, then I'll build it up in three days. Now, the other thing is, is that I want to add, if the water bearer in, in uh, Luke 22 and 10 says, or Jesus led people to the water bearer, and you go and look up Uranus, which is the water bearer, uh, Aquarius, then you're going to have some identity that what they were telling you about what's in heaven, you don't have to worry about it. And that's for the people that are here. I do believe in repeating because repetitions people uh, get it. When you're repetitious about information, people will eventually hear it because probably um, out of a paragraph, some of us are only hearing five words. And again, it's important for the person or the people that are looking at this information to take it in and be excited that they can do something with it because we're not just going we're not going nowhere. We're going somewhere with it. Uranus is a technology planet. 
That means that people that have this energy and that feel it now, they may be um, experiencing the desire to do something great because it's an energy of greatness, right? And so with that greatness, you can put together what we're saying and know that if something in your life has been torn down in the last two or three years or 10 years or 18 years, that you can rebuild it because that's what the word says. You believe in Jesus or you believe in the Bible, then you get that. And that's what he was saying because his information is connected to the heavens, right? Yes. So take away the idea of only being earthly good and no heavenly good. If you can pray to bind something in heaven, you need to know about heaven. And that same heaven that you're talking about or you're getting to understand is within you. That same heaven has all of the planets within it and all of that planetary energy is within us. All right, and so when someone calls me and they say, well, I like what you were talking about, but I didn't quite understand it. You won't understand until you're coming into an element where your mind is being provoked to think differently. That's what I do, right? Everyone knows that. And so you always have to keep that um, idea and also the idea of what you want to do in the future, like tomorrow. If the temple is torn down today, he said in three days he would raise it. I remember going through... Um, a hard, hard time in my life. And this is where people, life gets people because life is actually teaching you what you can do, not what you cannot do. It's motivation behind life. Life is about nature, the four elements, right? And then you will begin to talk to people about that and they will tell you that that is not, that is not a uh, God. Well, I want to ask, when you talk about the four elements, why there's dirt outside. By the way, that's earth, right? And the earth has a um, energy that is connected to it, such as um, Taurus and Virgo and Capricorn. These are earth signs, right? So don't let them fool you anymore, because we're in the future. A lot of us have been misled and now we're being led to the truth. What is the truth gonna do? It's gonna set you free. Now, it, 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 it definitely, it depends on what your belief system is. Cause see, a lot of people were saying that they were Christians and Buddhists or, you know, across the board, we have different religions. But the thing is, is your mind believing consciousness. See, if you had a, a dollar and you seen it as five or 10, your consciousness could change your ability to manifest, meaning that you see a dollar, I give it to you, but it will turn into more. I did this in the office before. However, I didn't put it in this context. A lot of times people are stuck. They're not moving forward because their mind can't see anything but what they've seen in the past. Until you come out of the past, you can't go forward into the future. You can't even be here in this present moment. So a lot of people would say, you know, I like the class, but I didn't really understand because they're still thinking past. People don't know how to turn their minds off. Everything that they see is connected to what they used to do rather than them disconnecting from what they used to do and just being connected to nothingness. So with Uranus being a, a futuristic planet, it's asking for everyone to change the dynamics. And this wasn't sudden. The universe has been asking for people to change for a long time. Number one, change you. If you don't change you or work on you, then you will be lost like many people are. And then, you know, here we can always go back and reference the Bible because salvation is what they taught us. But salvation sounds religious. So many people really didn't do it. You become free of 
blame and shame, right? And that's a Uranian energy. But after a while, if the person or people or community, cities and states do not take on the energy that the planets are bringing, because they are 12 planets. There's a sun and a moon, just like a mother and a father. There is a birthing of planets. Just, you know, envision. Begin to uh, live in your mind and dream that in the beginning, there was nothing but, but chaos, darkness, and void, right? And this, this planet that I'm, I've been discussing was about chaos. So that planet represents all the chaos and destruction that's in our lives until we get an understanding of what's happening with that energy and find out where it is in our natal chart, then we could keep going through um, breakdowns instead of breakthroughs. You heard that in church too. So I wanna connect it because a lot of times we don't know what a breakdown is until we're broken and we don't know how to get out of it You know, to get our breakthrough, right? Yes. So um, moving on from there, this energy, Uranus, you know, if you got some paper, write it down and then become acquainted with it because you want to know why even people come in your life like lightning and then they leave. You don't want to be mad at them anymore. You want to understand that they bolting because they have this energy on their trail. Some people are in a transformation period where they're being changed and that, that same energy is just hitting them off course. And then, you know, after a while they sit down and I ain't talking about a day or two, they, they're looking around and saying that their lives changed and they don't know how, how it happened. Well, it was just like Jesus. Some, some people came in and they acted with the force to destroy him, but the force of destruction came for him to get in position for the next level of his life. The next level of his life, meaning that you, you know, you would have to really see what's happening and let go of what you've been holding on to. Because, you know, the funny thing about this here, and that's what this energy does, but St. Anne says, I release ego, arrogance, and vanity. And the thing about this is, is that I believe in God, but I'm afraid to let God lead my life. I'm, I'm even afraid to do what Jesus did. Um, reconstructing a model of living for people. And when I say reconstructing a model for people uh, concerning living, he never did go into a building or build a building. So we, we don't know where that came from with Jesus, with all of these buildings be, being built. To me, it looks like religion, right? But that's just my opinion. Well, I was saying earlier to um, Ashley uh, that the model of the New, New Testament, and I'm, I'm, I'm drawing this out because I want people to get in the habit of understanding that before we even came here, people, the heavens was created. There was no earth. When you get the truth, then people cannot duke you. And some people will say, well, what does that have to do with me and the way that I live? You live the way that you live because you ain't never been educated properly. This is the, the issue. We have not been educated. Whenever people talk about Christianity, if you bring in the fact that there was planetary um, figures, then what happens is, is that they say it's witchcraft or it's something else. The planets were here and the universe uh, was here before the earth and water. Now, when you think about earth, wind and water and fire, aren't they here in the earth? Yes, they are. So why would I believe people that said the four elements is not about a godly teaching? Even so, you got people that are born in certain times that represent earth, wind, fire, and water. 
Now, the reason why I bring this up is because if you put the four of them together, earth, wind, fire, and water, they can make changes in our life. That means that even four of us that have earth, wind, water, and fire can bring changes into each other's life. There's an agreement that has to be made. The agreement is to study and show yourself approved. If there is a disagreement, then disagree, but don't get so angry that you can't reconcile the issue concerning the teaching of four elements, right? Because the reason why people's lives are the way that they are is because you see, there's a lot of people that studied about elements, but there's a lot of them that didn't. I see four elements in the Bible. And why am I saying that? Because we need that spiritual um, foundation to let us know that we've been duped. It's four elements. Even when the prophet Elijah was under uh, the tree and he hadn't had nothing to eat, he was homeless. He was under a tree. He was sitting on dirt. And it was water out there. The Holy Spirit is, con is considered fire. So then the other part is, is that he was sitting in the air. Can you help me out with this? Because you, know, you slough off the lies and then you become free. How do you become free in your own life when you've been thinking a certain way? And I'm, do I'm saying this here because you've been thinking a certain way and you think that it is good. But it ain't, pro it ain't produced no good in your life. Now, we have to go through some hardships in order to get through the good. But this is where you begin to turn lead into gold. That's in the Bible. Lead turning into gold. You become gold instead of heavyweight. You burden and you're worried about stuff because you don't even know how to let go of worry, right? Yes. You cannot be blessed and you stressed. People say all kind of affirmations and quotes, but they don't become them. You see, the problem with us is that we're talking and talking, but not shutting up enough to become what we said. And some of us have become what we said, but it, it's been a negative word, negative. So when you take this here and you look at the planet Uranus, all that it does, it's, it's the energy of the Aquarius um, sign. And Aquarius is very, is very stout in what it believes. It will not give up its belief system. It does its own thing. We're in that age. A lot of people are still in the traditional age of the Piscean age. Do you understand? And the Piscean age is about tradition, but the Aquarian age is not about tradition. Now, when you look around, I don't have to even go to the Bible because I gave scriptures on it. The Aquarian age is about the water bearer pouring out the water, the spirit of God. Out of your belly, living waters will flow, but they will not flow until you are released with spirit. And that flow is about prosperity. I feel that there's a lot of people that don't even believe that they can get to prosperity, but there's a lot of people that are prosperous and they don't know it. The thing is people have matched their prosperity with the world's prosperity. And that is not right. That's not the correct way. So we live in a time in the past where everything that we acquired is what made us great. Well, what happens when that shit is taken from you? You feel great? You see, anybody that put all their money into one basket is going to be lost. Because if you don't understand heaven and earth, your desire and thoughts that material things make you great is going to lead you asunder. You're going to lose because that's not what makes you great. That is social 
um, information or the social construct that has showed us that things make us great. What make us great is our belief system within ourself. What do you believe about yourself? And from your belief within yourself, a reconstruction happens outside of you. A lot of people are being broken and gutted. They don't know, which is why I do talk about the planets. I, it helps your behavior because you realize when you really wake up to what's being said that the energy from the planets is what's causing you to react out of order. You know, I've said that Pisces, um, Pisces, they uh, have a lot of people. I mean, their energy, it causes people to go into addictions. And the reason why is because it's a it's an emotional um, it's an emotional energy. That means that Piscean you know individuals until they realize that they're like the water being tossed to and fro and the fish going back and forth, identifying that the Piscean age belonged to Christianity, but Christianity had not taught some people what they needed to stand on the solid rock. Then what happens is they're going back and forth. Now this is all of my own analogy and then working with people. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's better for a man to study people than it is for them to study material. Material things, they gonna come and go. Yes, the body will come and go, but the body to me is more valuable than material because if I could teach five to 10 people their value and they really get it and they work at it. See, I can't make you get it. But if I could get them to realize how valuable, that takes some of the stress and the depression away from you because you begin to think what's being said to you is more important than anything else that's happened in the past. The past is why many people are locked up in their mind. Now that goes back to Pisces. The Piscean age with institutionalization. It also deals with the mind being institutionalized. Now, if someone did not know that, it might help them because they would begin to look at, well, how do I get my mind unlocked? You gotta work at it. When you pray, you gotta believe what you're saying. Your polarization cannot be the, the looming factor of how you work your life. You got to look at how to scientifically and spiritually bring yourself into alignment. Words can do it. Actions have to follow. The body is created out of energy. That energy will have you going all over the place as in Aries, hyperactive, fighting, fighting for itself, doing all of this kind of stuff when it can be at peace as in Gemini, a lover, but it's polarized with darkness and light and don't even know that it needs to come together and be like yin and yang. Or Aquarius, you know, you're supposed to pour the water out, but a, a, a disobedient Aquarius will say, well, I don't want to give the water to nobody, it's mine. Those are characteristics of those signs. But then you look at yourself and say, where am I in this? So if Uranus is impacting someone's life, they could be rich today and poor tomorrow. The thing about being rich today and poor and tomorrow is maybe the slate was wiped out with what you're doing because it wasn't productive. It was not even what you're supposed to do at this time in your life. Uranian energy, that's what it does. And it's not up to you because you can't change, you know, the universe mind, you can't change God's mind. Even Jesus is showing us that in the New Testament because I said, I didn't see him tell people to build the temple. He said his body was. The facts that connect him with this energy that I'm talking about is that he told the disciples in Luke 22 and 10, go to this place and the water bearer would be there. 
the reason why he told them that who is Aquarius energy, who is this Uranus energy, the reason why he told them that is because they were being prepared to actually go out on their own as apostles. You can't go out on your own until you can listen and believe what God is saying, though. He says the truth you will know and it will make you free. And that means that you got to you got to decide what's true to you. What is true to you? And it's not up to anybody to tell you what's true. It's up to you to make the decisions. Your decisions cannot be based on your past and what you used to do. You got to be making new decisions because you know that your past didn't do you no good. Yesterday, what did you profit? And any time that you're going through a season that seems hard or you're not going to get out of it, you can't let the season convince you that you're not going to get out of it. You got to talk to yourself. That's how you come into more of your truth that makes you free. And that's where you begin to see Uranus energy working for you because Uranus doesn't mean for none of the planets are there to um, and their energy to keep us in a broken state. That's why we have the ability to pray. Just because you talk about planets does not mean that there's a separation. The separation of the planetary aspects and the earth is the problem. Because if you knew this, you would definitely have prospered more. Your forefathers did back in Egypt. Even though, you know, they told you that Egypt was a low place. I don't believe that because we have to go back to Egypt to find out how, how much greatness uh, our people created. Math, chemistry, doctors, you know, all even right now over in Africa, which is where Egypt is, in case no one knows, they don't, they don't breed uh anything less than doctors and lawyers and you know professionals of course they have people that don't make it you know what i'm saying but their percentage of uh individuals that actually become professionals are great and i don't mean that you have to become a doctor or a whatnot you might be an entrepreneur the point i'm making is that the inheritance of most uh people of color is great but they live in low life um circumstances why why because they don't study they don't study nothing for themselves they study everything externally and you know i know that some people are going to say well i've been studying well you should be getting a breakthrough soon if you're studying the right stuff you should be you should be getting a breakthrough the mind the mind is the prison it's not your outer circumstances, it's the mind. It's like unwrapping your mind from the things that you believe. You believe that you should not get what you need. You even believe that people were always going to uh, be ahead of you. Why? Because you really didn't believe in yourself. I know that there is an excuse for um, whatever we believe in ourselves, but it's not good enough to give up on yourself. Yet you want people to believe in you. It's not possible. I can tell you from my own experience, many, many issues and, and trials and tribulations that we go through, they're there for us, not for others. And what they do these, these issues is they challenge us to be defeated or to be a conqueror. It's not the people, it is the issues. The mind has set up its own prison and has called itself to go through this. So it continues to replay situations until it manifests over and over again what it needs to either defeat or conquer itself.
when you add the energy of Uranus, you can see the destruction. Man is so powerful. That's what this energy is about. I can, if you destroy this, he says, I will, I will um, lift it up. Now, Jesus was talking to people outside, but Jesus had those entities or energy within itself. He couldn't be in the presence of haters without him manifesting the haters from within. A lot of people don't want to dig deep when it comes to Christ. He had a, a, a he had a sabotager, Judas, but that's because he he had to have a Judas within himself. You know, you, you can't just read scriptures and then say, okay, well, it just looked like it was easy. No, you got to go deep. And if you don't want to go deep, then you will miss the true understanding. Because when you're called and when there's a spiritual uh, continuity or a concept there, or if you're going through something and it just seems like years upon years or decades, you can't get out. You got to go back and say, it's something that I'm missing. I'm not going to blame myself just and say that I quit. I got to go back to the spiritual part of who I am because we are created out of mind, body, and soul. Your soul is the part. What is it in your soul that you keep having to go back to the beginning for, right? And that's where you're going to get it. And I know that some people will, you know, they'll say, well, that's just too much for me. I think, you know, this is elevated. That's why you reach for it. If you don't reach for it or work for it, you ain't going to get it. This is life. So in your freedom, if you think about, I want to be free from what I've been on, in addiction, codependency, um, the, 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 Factors of the trauma. I see the traumas continuously that happened 20 years ago. I was poor when I came into the world. You got the keys, but you're not reaching hard enough or striving hard enough. And yes, I said it. So how can you say that, Kim or Miss Kim? Because I didn't struggle too. You know, you can't let your struggle look better than you. That's another thing. You can't let your struggle look better than you. You cannot let the struggle know that it defeated you. You're talking about people you're fighting with, but it's not the people. You have those people in you. Now, now get rid of them. How do you get rid of them? You got a, 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 a wonderful blueprint because Jesus got rid of them. He said, I got all of this hell in me. And it ain't even written like that, but it's the truth. Anywhere that you have people working with you, you're gonna have hell. That means that you're manifesting it. Why? Because Peter even denied him. I'm not talking about the people outside. I'm talking about he manifested his feelings. People are, you know, in positions where they've been betrayed, but they betray themselves. You might have been in a lesson for 10 years where you were giving and helping people, but you didn't pay attention to if they were the ones that you should be helping. And so when it, the chips fall down, you ain't got nobody to help you now because you're just investing in the people. Now, I'm not telling you that your seeds are not gonna come back, but I'm gonna tell you that if you don't plant in fertile ground, you may not get everything back. The Bible says that, why? See, your planting is about you believing and sowing. Your planting is also about you learning how to give, no one else. You learning how to give. Well, what do you have to give besides that thing? Maybe you need to give up your ego. Because if you don't, this energy that I'm talking about is going to deal with you. 
The fruit of the spirit. You see how people make this religious? This is life. Because you think that you gave and tithe and offering, that's it. Or you gave to somebody, yada, yada. You understand? But if you don't give up, if this fruit don't make you give up your ego, you ain't making no fruit. Every time you get beat down, you should be less of arrogance and ego. Do you feel what I'm saying? If you do, you can just type that for me. And the reason why I know this, and I know that it's different for people, I went through all of this here, you know, and I gave in, in levels. And it's not about, I want people to say, you know, you're wonderful. I just want you to, you to know suffering to give because you believe in something. But then when you really look at it, you're suffering to give up something. Because see, it's easy to give something that you have an abundance of, and it looks like it's not going out. But can you give when you have little to nothing? That's when the breaking comes. You give up something that you love, right? That's when the breaking comes, because you see, it's easy. Because see, the widow gave a mite. That's all she had. Significant that when I was able to give and give, I felt good about it. But when I was able, not able in the same capacity, I felt like ish. It made me feel, feel, feel. The thing about giving is that it will show you in the time that you don't have, like the prophet Elijah. Because we got this energy that's breaking people down. It's, you know, people are in places of disrespect. They've been disrespected by people. But the reason why they've been disrespected and the breaking is coming is because they allowed it. So when you give, your giving is connected to something that's going to bring you into an alignment with something that you are sabotaging yourself with. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can get money, but listen, your lesson, this is about lessons because this earth is a school of learning. Every day you get up, you say, what am I learning? And then spirit going to eventually start talking to you. But if you forget to acknowledge spirit and the lesson that you learn in, spirit is not gonna recognize you because see, you're not staying on task. What are you here to do? And when I say spirit, we're dealing with energy because the, the planet again that we're dealing with is sudden and impactful. Sudden and impactful such as you got a president that was in the hospital a couple of days ago and he's fine with COVID now. You is something else. Anyway, moving on. Because now what you're doing is giving out a germ and you just lying to people as if they fools, right? Anyway, however it go, that's how they do it. But when you want the truth and you want to become free, that's when you start getting out of the system and believing what these people saying. You start asking yourself, how can I do something different? How can I be different? Because you got to be sick and tired of yourself living in a way that millions and millions of people, and they ain't winning. They're not winning. The reason why they're not winning is because they weren't set to win. Now, when you came here, you were set to win, but you didn't know it because you're still following their illusion, by the way, which is Pisces. Until Pisces is free, they're in an illusion. Illusion is when you see something that ain't real. It ain't the truth either. So you have to learn all of that. The illusion says you got to do stuff a certain way that the world showed you. Don't you know that you came here and they projected and told you that you got to live a certain way? You got to pay bills. You got to do it. That's, that's the structure. Am I saying that it's okay? No, because who's profiting from it? It's not okay. You see, that's an illusion that they can benefit from you, but you're not benefit 
benefiting from them. And then people will say, well, God, why you put me here? No, you know what? You signed a contract that you would learn, but you've been doing everything else but learning. Now I talk to myself because some of it becomes very clear. You see, it's not how you live and where you live, it's what you live. It's what you live. It's not how you live, where you live. See, people, they, they talk about homeless people. A lot of them are happy. But where would you and I be if we were in their position? A lot of them don't want to deal with the stuff that we're dealing with. When you look at this year, you can see all the destruction. And you can see this energy of Uranus trying to come in and or it's coming in and it's it's speaking freedom through the people because of the protesters. That's a key identification of Uranian energy because, you know, 10 years ago, they weren't doing it. A year ago, they weren't doing it. Why weren't they doing it a year ago? Because people didn't have the balls to get up and do what they're doing now, right? When Trayvon Martin was killed, they didn't have the balls to get up and do it. But you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Sometimes you're sick and tired of sitting down watching people get hurt and do nothing. You got to have confidence and courage when you feel that. You got to have confidence. And, and, and then it's an energy, though, that's coming in. It's giving you that confidence and courage, by the way. There's other ones, but we want to focus on this because if you could focus on one, you will look out and you'll see every time you read the news or look at the news that that is the energy of Uranus bringing freedom. And some people said that it would never be free. Now they decommissioning um, the police departments. We have not seen that in our time. Do anybody know that police departments were created to organize and destroy uh, certain people? Because back in the 40s, they did not have police departments like this. People were so organized that they did whatever because certain people just didn't want to go to jail. They worked on the railroads, the prisoners, you see? The time back then was very, very frightening for some people. Some people began to come into this world because the, world, the universe wants freedom. Even a spiritual teacher like Jesus would say centuries ago during the Piscean age, you will know the truth and the truth would set you free. The Piscean age has went on for decades and centuries. Now it's coming to an end and it was an imprisonment type of energy, Christianity. No one understands. And it's not the Christ in you that imprisons you, but it is the age because remember the Roman wars went on during the Christian age, right? Yes, study and allow God to put it together because no, everything that I'm telling you, it wasn't that I studied it and then I came, I was led to study it spiritually. You cannot get free if you don't know history because no one knows that they were fighting in a dark age. The Roman wars were attributed to dark age. Now, where are you going with this? People been living in darkness and they went to church and they said, you're going to be free. Your soul going to be set free. A lot of people have went back to some of the old stuff that they used to do. Now, I'm not telling you that you should depend on people because no, freedom is when you become free enough to speak and prophesy over yourself like Joel said. You're not depending on people in that magnitude. You're self-assured. And yes, it takes time. It also takes for you to be in a community where there's believers. Now we get into Jesus teaching right now, where there's believers, a community that gets together and they encourage each other and the mind is forth going. It's futuristic. It's not stuck, imprisoned in what other people have told them. 
what other people have made them believe. It is forming its own belief system predicated on the world, what they see, the teaching, spirituality, their prayers, and their meditations, and where they want to go into the light. So I was saying a lot of people believe and they, they say these things. I got to say this here. They say something like, I'm blessed and highly favored. Okay. They say it all the time. They also say that some like, you know, Jesus was saying, I'm the light of the world. I'm just saying, for instance, I want to get to a point. But they don't even realize that they don't light up the world. They don't even realize that they don't show that they're blessed and highly favored. Stop saying it until you get there. And the reason why I say that is because I wanna provoke people to think, how can you dislike somebody when you said that you're about the light? No, you gotta admit you about that darkness and that light. The contradictions. I love, but I don't even know what love is. I've never learned it. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are a contradicting type of individuals. It's, you know, get the energy in you into order because that energy flows to every um, uh, vein and artery and cell and organ of your body. You know why people are sick? Conflict within the body and the mind. Whatever you take into your mind, you believe it and it is so. And it's hard for us not to. You know, there's things that happens to us in life that we got to break the ties. People that you're around is not the problem. It's how much you allow into your brain, your ear gate, and then into your heart. Because out of the heart flow the issues of life. In the beginning here, I said, embarrassment and shame, fear and worry, doubt. All of those strife, ego, pride, you've got to get rid of it, but you got to identify. See, this, 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 this balance between humility and confidence becomes an issue because people don't even understand what confidence is. My confidence is not so upscaled that I am putting somebody down. I even recognize if my words are coming out in a way where others are feeling like they're under me. Now I understand what respect is. And in many cases, everybody on here has probably dealt with me and correction. I do understand that people don't like correction. I feel like this when it comes to correction. If you're not corrected, you will never know the truth. And if you don't correct yourself, you you is shit out of hot water. You, you might as well not take a bath. Why? Because you believe in that shit you think. Listen, all of us uh, have been corrected. Some of us have been corrected so that we have not regained what we're supposed to regain out of life. I'm just throwing some stuff out there because see, I've experienced some stuff. I ain't went through a whole lot because there was a time when obedience said, click, click, Dorothy. Get your obedience, Dorothy. And because obedience was necessary, I yielded, you know? Transparent enough to talk about your ups and downs because what are you ashamed of? What are you embarrassed by? Unless you need to go through more losses, that's it, you know, because I, I feel like 
Mm, I wouldn't I wouldn't have told people a lot of the things that I do now. I just walk through life and I don't have no control. Do I care? No. You know, because it's a lesser weight on me than trying to hold up the stuff. Sometimes when it looks like we've lost things, we want it back and we don't even know that it was no good for us because there's something more that we can do without it or and the only reason why it was in our lives is because, or that, whatever it is, is because it was it was something that it was a part of the mind for 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Don't you know that you've grown? Just, you know, for instance, that's what I say to myself. You know, um, you grow from the kindergarten to the first grade. You also grow from the second to the third, which means that you must grow in your mindset. That means you got to let go of stuff that's holding you back. Because see, some people still in the kindergarten and they're 50 years old. That's a shame. That's what you call retarded. You know, we got clinical situations where people are actually diagnosed to be retarded, but I see grown people, 50, 40 years old, that's retarded because they're stuck. And I think it's, you know, this is my opinion. I'm going to say this here. I think it's worse for a person to be um, acquired things and then to be stuck than for a, a person to be diagnosed with uh, mental retardation because at least they have an, a, a diagnosed disability. You, 40, 50 years old, going to work every day, you ain't got no diagnosis. That's a shame. You ain't passing the grade because all you thinking about is earthbound. A lot of your people that got money are earthbound. They don't know nothing. Once they're wiped out, Uranus hit their life, they are done. This, work, this world that we're in is under a change. I said I want people to get to a place where they stop. You know, you, you need to identify that you're in darkness and in light until you can get your balance. And when I say that again, I'm looking at, listen, I'm secretly embarrassed. But I'm still trying to hold up what I'm, I'm, I'm inside embarrassed about, what I'm secret embarrassed about. You need to stop that because the universe knows that you lying to yourself. Oh, I feel like everybody is against me, but I won't tell them. You need to stop lying to yourself because the universe knows that you're going against yourself. And then you got this energy again. Uranus is going to come in and knock your life down because then you're going to, you're going to, either you're going to go in a mental hospital or you're going to admit that you was lying to yourself. Listen, I ain't laughing at nobody, but you know, you gotta you gotta deal with your mind. This is me. And you need to observe your thoughts. You need to know that that thought right. Oh no, you know what? You the same one that uh caused me the trouble. I, I know you now. Fear, worry, and then fear and worry is gonna cause you to say things and act towards people a way that you're unconsciously not aware of triggers you got to get you know you got to get rid of it am i saying that you have to do it you got to study you got to meditate and yes you have to pray because i would be crazy being able to teach people this if i had not used what i'm telling you oh you've been crying all night and you think that's it no you're just in a lesson it's just not that crucial. What happens is, is that we don't learn from one, two lessons and we get deeper and deeper. Well, you can still get out of it. It's, it's okay. And I'm not patronizing. I'm saying from my own perspective, mentally, you got to deal with your mind. And you have to stop allowing your mind to lie to you, it's nobody else. Your mind creates the manifestations of people. Every experience that we have right now, and some people, I swear they can't connect it, but I can. 
anything that I'm going through, I can connect it and I will be honest and say, you know what? That's what humbles me to say, you know what? Shut up, Kim. They're not as bad as you think they are because now you see you in them. You see yourself in the manifestation of a person that came into your life. And instead of observing, you keep running your mouth. That's where your distraction is. And your distraction is also in a place where you do not want to identify with who you are in someone else. Even right here, all of us on here is a piece of who I am. I don't care what you do or what you say, it is good. But it can't be good for you until you realize that each and every one of us is a part of each other. You can't. You see, I said, and I have to say this here because you will not be able to go into the future to deal with Uranus energy and create a business if you don't get identifying with your own self. Uh, the part of your human self that allowed you to be a part of something, it does hurt when you're you know, separated from it, but you could have just been separated where it would only be like six months, but you made it 10 years. Hold on, y'all. Okay, I'm sorry. So um, I had to take that. That was about my father. So um, you guys have any questions? No? All right. Um, I'm going to kind of like close up. Um, and remember, embarrassment and shame is connected to something. Um, and it's not, I don't feel like this is my opinion. Um, I don't feel like it's anything that we have to really partake in. It's like a spirit. 
that keeps us oppressed. And if you're gonna be free, then you're gonna face it, you know, head on and tell it that it does not rule and master your life because if it's been a part of it. And I brought it up in this context because the spirit brought that to me. A, a lot of people hide behind things. Humility and confidence can work together, but pride cannot be it. You know, I remember someone that I, um, I respected very much telling me that they just tell themselves that they the shit, even when they're not. Outside of them, it helps them, but inside of them, it's, it does not help because inside is empty. And even when they were telling me that, they don't know that I was observing how they operate. Because I wouldn't want to tell someone that I puff up my flesh, but I'm scared to sleep without my bedroom door locked at night. Observing. A lot of times you are in situations with people because you need to observe their behavior, not them observe yours. You see, if you cry, someone might say, well, she's weak or he's weak. That's not the case. You've learned how to address things and release. But some people will look at crying as a weakness. And that's a sad thing. The reason why it's sad is because it's natural. And until we can get back to some of those places in life where we're like living in life with the natural aspect of, I don't want to be in pain, but it's a part of life. The more I learn about life to balance out the pain, um, the less I'm going to go through. You know, I, I, I'm going to say this here, and this is different from everybody else. I work on myself. When I'm in a, a corner and a lot of people wouldn't see that, you reveal to people when you feel like your self-esteem is being um, broken down. But the reason why it's being broken is because it needs to be rebuilt properly. I said, someone talked their self into being great outside externally, but they didn't do it inside. You got a bunch of garbage inside. It's been working for you for a while, but in time, what we see is the garbage begins to spill over. You can tell by the way that People carry themselves how they define themselves. I'm going to tell you that because it's just there. A lot of times people are angry with you and you can be angry with them because they have the nerve to do what you wouldn't do. So there we are. No questions, right? No, ma'am, no questions. All right. I hope y'all get something out of it. God bless and remember that energy.